Hello. Welcome to this web class. Give me a um a thumbs up or a smiley face if you can hear me properly, just so I know that it's working. Caboodles of randomness. That is quite an epic name. Great. Thanks for the Thanks for letting me know. Um, yeah, welcome, welcome. Um, those of you who are joining us for the first time for one of these classes, um, yeah, hopefully you're gonna enjoy it. Those of you who've been before, welcome back. Um, good, perfect, thanks. Thanks guys. <clears throat> yeah, we're doing lungs. Oh, so you're, you're Mariam, you're doing lungs in school. Oh, well, this is perfect, perfect timing for you then. Um, yeah, nice. Yeah, I'm very good, thanks, Fredly. How are you? Um, who's in the UK, by the way? Because it's been like an epic weekend of weather. Well, at least like in London, it's been, I don't know if it's been the same all over the UK, but uh, it's been like insane. Yesterday was, it felt like summer. So nice. Jess in the UK, Mariam. Um, perfect. Just, sorry, just on lungs as well. Okay, nice. It should be like a, a good little revision session for you. Yeah, it does feel like summer started. Although I looked, not to like burst your bubble, uh, I looked like the next few weeks, it's getting like colder again for a bit. So we're not quite out of winter yet, it seems. But uh, it's certainly been a nice break from the, the, uh, the weather a few weeks ago. Matthew, you're in Switzerland. I'm jealous. Um, I would I would love to be in Switzerland right now. Do you do, you do any skiing out there? AS Level Bio is not cancelled. They have like cancelled all the like official exams. They they're providing papers, which schools are like optionally able to do. It's a it's a weird like compromise they've come to. I don't understand why they've chosen this. After like last year, they were like all over like micromanaging it and like very controlling centrally. And then this year they've been completely opposite. They're like, teachers do whatever you want. We'll just use your grades. So it's a very strange um, lack of consistency they seem to be showing. Uh, this class today is for all exam boards. So AQA, uh, Edexcel, OCR, it's all relevant. Um, there is one little bit at the end, which is actually not in the AQA spec, but I'll let you know when we get to it. The rest of it is for, for everybody. Oh, Kathy, you're a private candidate. Yeah, it's even more of a mess if you're a private candidate. Um, I work with some like homeschooling tutees and we're, we're trying to figure out how we're gonna like give them grades because it's it's all up in the air. Um, anyway, that's enough of me talking. Let's make a start on our lesson today. So just share my screen. Hopefully you should now see a PowerPoint and we'll go through that. Somebody asked us what the topic. <laughs> well, I didn't get that that notification, and unfortunately, it was already in the plan. So, uh, yeah, we're sticking with the same one. So, yeah, we're looking at gas exchange in humans and ventilation. So, some of the exam boards, in fact, maybe all of them, you also look at gas exchanges in fish and insects. But today, we're not doing that. We're just focusing on um, humans. So a little bit about me. Um, my name's Alex. I'm the head of biology here at SnapRevise. Um, I've got a biology degree and I've been teaching and tutoring biology for the last four or five years. Um, so yeah, so I'm just catching up on these comments. Do you save lives? Is that addressed at me or someone else? Um, I don't think I've ever saved someone's life, uh, not directly. I wish I had, it would be a cool story, but uh, no. Um, so today, a little bit of excitement, we're giving away a free account, so um, yeah, a chance to win. Um, all you have to do is follow us on Instagram uh, and then share a picture of our web class on your story and just tag SnapRevise so that we know you've done it and you're in with a chance to, um, to win. 
Did I ever struggle with biology in my life? What do you mean with biology? Like my personal biology of my body or learning biology as a subject? Um, fixed law, yes, we're doing fixed law, exactly. Yeah. In A-level biology, yeah, I found A-level biology. Um, it's definitely challenging. Like the, just the breadth of the syllabus, I think it's one of the hardest A-levels, um, definitely. Like there's so much you need to learn, so much content and the mark schemes can be very niche and, and like very picky. Um, but the good thing is they tend to be quite similar. So the more mark schemes, the more past papers you do and the more you like interact with the mark schemes, marking your own questions, for example, is very useful. Uh, then you can improve. What did I study? Uni, I studied biology, um, just like straight biology. Um, best tip, keep like, yeah, little and often, keep trying to like, commit the stuff to memory. You can't cram a whole bunch of information in one go. You need to like be sort of drip feeding it. Um, I, I went to uni uh, in, uh, well, can't talk, at Durham, Durham University uh, up in the north which i would definitely recommend i had a really good time there um so growth structure of lungs we're gonna look at the like um like the some of the features uh we're gonna look at ventilation so inhalation and exhalation and then if we have time we'll look at lung capacity and how that's measured this is not for aqa um they just don't they're not interested in this they don't have it in their spec for some reason so let's go through. These are the specifications. I'm just going to flick through them quickly. There's not much to talk about. Um, if you want to screenshot your spec, please feel free. That's the OCR one. Edexcel A and B there. Um, this is also relevant if you do international A levels or even IB. This is all um, this is all relevant. So um, yeah, it will be helpful no matter what um, key stage. What is what is A level key stage? five, whatever key stage five course you're on, it'll be uh, useful. So, um, yeah, what can you guys tell me about the lungs in general? We're just gonna sort of brainstorm. It's not a very big box. So we'll try and fit as much information as we can in there, but we might run out of space. All the features of the lungs that are beneficial. Kashika, yes, this is also for CIE, exactly. <clears throat> no, no, it's mostly for AQA. Only the very last topic is actually not on the AQA spec. Nice. Yeah, so um, we've already labeled these features. So we've got a windpipe, AKA a trachea, that branches off onto two bronchi, um, the left and the right. That then branches off into smaller tubes, like a bronch there, and they're called bronchioles. Uh, and then this is, so this is a bronchiole here. We're sort of like zoomed in now. Bronchiole, and then at the end of the bronchioles are the alveoli. So this is where the actual gas exchange takes place. It looked like little bunches of grapes. They're there to increase the surface area of the lungs. So yeah, they also have a good blood supply. So let's call these capillaries. Um, yeah. Nice. Yeah, lots of good facts coming in. Definitely. So, um, yeah, how do we even like fit all this on the page? So, alveoli, large surface area. Oh, no, we already said that. No, we haven't. Um, large surface area of lungs. In fact, the surface area of the lungs is around 70 meters squared in an adult human, which is pretty massive. That's like roughly the area of a tennis court, which is impressive because the actual lungs themselves um, are like two smallish balloons. They're not actually that big, but they create that huge surface area by using the alveoli. Having lots of um, like little balls is much more uh, efficient for getting in gas. So large surface area, rich blood supply or good blood supply. The alveoli, 
Um, oops. Um, I've messed up this word completely. Let's just start again. <laughs> Good blood supply. Oh yeah, I forgot. For a while, my eraser wasn't working, so I've forgotten that it exists. So I could just use that. Um, yeah, so thin walls of albiolo. Uh, plus capillaries. This gives us a short diffusion distance. So these together basically comprise like two parts of Fick's law. So Fick's law uh, is to do with the rate of diffusion. So um, basically diffusion, it's a passive process, but it's driven by some different forces. So it's surface area times um, concentration gradient. And you divide that by diffusion distance. And basically what that means is the two on the top, if you increase surface area, you increase, increase the rate of diffusion. If you increase the concentration gradient, you increase the rate of diffusion. But the one on the bottom, the fact that you divide by the diffusion distance, that's because that's inversely proportional. So if you increase the diffusion distance, you will actually decrease the rate of diffusion. So that's why that one's on the bottom. So increasing the top two will, the, will increase the rate. This will decrease the rate. So that's just always a good thing to think about, like fixed law, what's affecting diffusion. It's going to be these three things that are um, contributing to the rate. Um, nice. Surfactant. Very good. Um, yeah, we'll put that on. Surfactant it creates a moist wall, which is uh, easier for gases to diffuse into a moist wall. And it also prevents uh, the alveoli from sticking. Sticking shut uh, due to surface tension. So water creates hydrogen bonds with other water molecules, or it can adhere to the wall. And this means there's a risk that because the walls are moist, that they, they might stick shut. We don't want that because obviously you then wouldn't be able to breathe. So the surfactant, it's made of um, lipoproteins and that actually like reduces the surface tension. Um, are you late? No, no, we've, we've only started like 10 minutes ago. So um, yeah, you're still plenty of time to, to learn all about, we're looking at the lungs basically today, lungs and ventilation. Um, surfactant is a, a substance that's secreted in the lungs. Um, yeah, mostly water, but there's also some lipoproteins in there, which help to reduce the surface tension. Um, I think some of the specs don't really mention surfactant. In fact, maybe, maybe it's just AQA that doesn't mention it. So if you do, if you've never heard of it, it's probably because you don't need to know it for your spec. Um, ventilation is an adaptation. Yeah. And we're going to look at how the lungs are ventilated on the next page. Surfactant is just produced by the cells in the, um, in the lungs. Yeah, this is relevant for year 12 and year 13, although this is, this is from the year 12 syllabus, but obviously you still need to know it for year 13. Um, what else should we say? Oh, we can talk about the, what do you guys remember about the cells that line the trachea and the bronchi? There's two types of cells there and they work together to keep the lungs clean and prevent infections. As in, yeah, kind of collapsing and like sticking shut, exactly. Surface area to volume is a, like a ratio. So if you've got a large surface area and a small volume, you have a large surface area to volume ratio. That's good for diffusion, basically. Nice, yeah, lots of you coming in with the right answers here. So there's two types of cells, ciliated 
epithelial cells plus goblet cells. These are just well, just in the trachea and the, the bronchi. Uh, basically, they look like if this was the the inside of the the uh, trachea. There's these um, cells that make it up. So most of them are ciliated cells. That means they have these little hair-like structures, which they use to waft up dirt and pathogens. And then some of them are goblet cells. So they basically produce mucus, which comes out and um, collects dirt and pathogens from the air. So there's always a risk of getting infections in your lungs. They're a very nice environment for pathogens to grow in. So your body's always making sure or trying to prevent these pathogens taking advantage of that nice environment uh, and prevent them from growing. So the mucus traps dirt and pathogens and the ciliated epithelial cells waft them up and out of the way. Um, you actually end up swallowing it, which is kind of gross. Um, it gets wafted up to the back of your throat and then it kind of like swallows, but then at least the stomach acid will destroy the pathogens, even if it is a bit nasty to think about. <clears throat> okay. Um, what other adaptations? I guess, yeah, we can say like ventilation maintains concentration gradients. grad. This is the last one in Fick's law. So the, th the things that are going to influence the rate of diffusion and gas exchange is all just diffusion. It's all driven by diffusion. Uh, it's not an active process. It's passive. Um, so yeah, if you're ever describing something to do with this, talk about how the surface area, concentration gradient and diffusion distances are adapted. And then a couple of extra things like features of the alveoli and surfactant and the cells. And you could answer like even like a long essay question on adaptations of the, of the lungs. Uh, yes, there's obviously also the, um, the lymphatic system are also involved in like suppressing infections in the, in the lungs. Exactly. Hi, Marion. How are you? Yeah, I'm very good, thanks. Um, yeah, and macrophages as well, Candy, yeah. Um, yeah, March, what's happening on March the 8th again? What's the new rules? Is that where you can meet some, I can't, there's, I remember the, like, the timeline, but I keep getting the dates modeled up, like what you can do. Or is March the 8th when you guys go back to school? Oh yeah, school. Yeah, got it, got it. Yeah, that'd be nice after having like been kind of isolated for a while. It's weird, you wouldn't have thought like a couple of years ago, people would be like excited to start school. Um, how times have changed. Can you meet outside for a picnic then as well? Nice. Uh, Savannah, macrophages are white blood cells that sort of hang out in tissues and they stay there. So rather than like circulating in the bloodstream, like a neutrophil, they, um, they like sit in one place and just monitor stuff as it goes past. <clears throat> You're in like half the time in the college and half the time at home. Yeah, I've heard of a few ones that are doing that. Yeah. Um, cool. So what is this on this page? Can't remember. Oh, just label some of the extra features. So get you guys to label these. Two, three, four. What else? I guess we could label this. Five. Probably, I think red was a bad color choice because there's a lot of red on this already. Um, yeah. <clears throat> what are these features that we're looking at? Mm hmm So yeah, one and two. 
are intercostal muscles and which one's which? So these ones are the, um, the ones on the outside are the external. I'm just gonna put IC muscles, ICM, and these are the internal. I'm just gonna put ICM again, standing for intercostal muscles. Three is ribs, four is diaphragm, Uh, five is the heart, and six is the thorax. Did anybody get that one or thoracic cavity? So it basically just means like the whole chest area. So it's like basically the, comprises the lungs and the heart. Um, different to the abdomen. So the abdomen is what's underneath that. So that's mostly the, like the digestive system. So all your, all your um, like small intestine, um, large intestine, that stuff is your abdomen. Um, and yeah, if you, this is more like on a human, our abdomen and thorax are merged. So it's not as distinct. If you like on an insect, they typically are um, two different parts, or at least on like some insects, like a wasp. So I'm gonna try and draw a wasp here. They have an abdomen, which is like the, the sort of stripy part, if you're looking at a wasp. And then they have a, a thorax, and then they have a head, something like that. And they obviously have legs. This is a terrible diagram. Don't know why I started drawing this. And they have wings like that. That's supposed to be a wasp. Um, so yeah, they're on them, their body parts, let's draw a smiley face. Maybe that helps. Their body parts are more distinct. They've got head, thorax, and abdomen on a human. These two are merged kind of as one continuous thing. So it's not as, not as obvious. Um, how big are the lungs? Depends per person. So usually in general, the larger a person, the larger their lung capacity is. Like an Olympic rower, for example, would have around like up to like six, maybe even like six and a half, seven liters. Someone who's, um, quite small or um, like not particularly fit, will have a smaller lung capacity. Um, so how are we doing with that? Yeah, it did look a little bit like a turtle, didn't it? Um, yeah, it's not art's not my strong seat. This this session is recorded, yeah. All these YouTube ones go on go on YouTube. Um, and we do one a week. Um, it's a different subject each week though. Okay, nice. Mostly good ones, one, ones and a couple of one and a halves. Um, perfect. So we've got a two marker here. What we normally do is like introduce a topic and then look at exam questions. So we've done a bit of recap. Now we're looking at exam question. What I will say is this is a deceptive amount of space. It's actually relatively short answer that's required. So describe the pathway. This is the keyword here, taken by an oxygen molecule from the alveoli to the blood. So how's it gonna get from the alveoli to the blood for two marks? What's it gonna cross? Two things it's going to cross basically, and there's two marks. So you can be thinking tactically, that's probably how I score the marks. I talk about the two things that it crosses. <clears throat> yeah, so it does diffuse due to a concentration gradient, but we're not interested. The question's not asking why it moves. So we don't need to talk about concentration gradient. All it's asking is for the pathway, not the driving force or anything like that. So the pathway is, yeah, through the wall of the alveoli, the alveolar wall, or even better, if we said epithelium, oops, 
across the alveolar epithelium, brackets wall, uh, and then also crosses the capillary wall. The, what do we call the wall of the capillary? Oh, nice, Elsa's got there. Yeah. So the wall of the alveoli is an epithelium. The wall of the capillary is an endothelium. Again, brackets, wall. Nice, yeah. The lumen is the inside. So if this is like a cross section of a, a capillary, the actual wall, this is the endothelium. It's one cell thick. And this like space, this is the lumen. So lumen basically, be, basically means like the internal space of a tube. So of a like, say like a pipe, the inside is actually the lumen basically. Um, the difference between an endothelium and an epithelium. Yeah, good question. So, and it's a bit weird because it, it doesn't like quite make sense at first. So like an epithelium is something that's facing an external environment and an endothelium is at the edge of a tissue that's facing an internal environment. So the capillary, the endothelium is between like the other tissues and the blood, which is a different tissue. So it's a barrier between two internal environments. The epithelium, like the alveoli, they are actually inside our body, but the air we breathe in, that's not counted as part of our body. So although it's, we're breathing it into our body, it's still external. So it's a, bit, it's a bit strange. The inside of our lungs are like facing the outside technically, which is why I said it's a bit weird. It's also the same for our digestive system. The inside of our digestive system is facing an external environment. The food moving through our body isn't part of our body. It's an external environment. So um, yeah, that's where those two words come from. This is external. This is internal. Um, you don't, I wouldn't worry too much about it. Like as long as you can just remember that the, that the capillary is an endothelium, alveolar is epithelium, that's fine. You don't need to explain it. Okay. Um, nice. Stomach lining is epithelium, exactly. Okay, explain how one feature of an alveoli um, allows efficient gas exchange to occur. So there's a few things we could say here. So again, it's two marks. So you pick your feature and then you explain it. Again, pick a feature and then you explain it. Mm -hmm. So one cell thick. Equals short diffusion distance. Um, nice. What else could we say? <clears throat> mm -hmm. Rich blood supply. Um, maintains concentration gradients like that. Mm -hmm. Moist wall we could say as well. Um, gases diffuse better into moist conditions. How can we say this? Um, more gases diffuse more readily. Nice. <clears throat> yeah, the large surface area, I would say actually probably isn't relevant to this question because this is like a single alveoli. A single alveoli by itself doesn't have a particularly large surface area, but collectively, because we've got millions of them, there is a large surface area overall, but I would be a bit careful with that one, for this one. 
So you don't have to put all three. This is like, this is two marks. This would be two marks. This would be two marks. So you need to get one of those. Um, nice. Yeah, oh, yeah, you're you're kind of right. Like in the, with the insects, when they remove the um, the water, it does increase their rate of gas exchange. That's because the gases are like actively ventilated into the tracheal, so they can kind of like pump the air in and out. It's not just relying on diffusion alone. Um, whereas if when there's water in there, they can't pump it as much, so um, they can't ventilate it basically. But the actual lining of the wall, if it's moist, then it diffuses in better than if it's dry. Uh, yeah, fixed law is on the ACR spec. Uh, Mohammed, we talked about fixed law a little bit earlier on, so I can't really like, I don't want to go into it again, otherwise we'll run out of time. But if you scroll back later, you can recap. Okay, fine, I'll write out, write out one more time. So fixed law is rate of diffusion equals surface area times conch gradient divided by um, diffusion distance. So it basically just describes how diffusion is like things that will affect the rate of diffusion. <clears throat> okay. Oh, some of you guys read out anyway. Oh, actually I could have, yeah. Should have just relied on you guys to do that. Thanks for that. Um, it, you don't need to memorize it but it kind of just helps you to visualize in your head, or no, not visualize, conceptualize what's going on basically. But no, you're not expected to know it by heart. <clears throat> okay, so ventilation. Let's talk about how we ventilate our lungs. So this is essentially breathing. So it's also with pressures and volumes, and there's a couple of muscles that control that. So we're going to go through the, what, what the processes are. So inspiration is breathing in. Some specs prefer to use inhalation. So you can kind of use either there's like synonyms. <clears throat> but they're both definitely better than saying breathing in. So say inspiration or say inhalation. Don't say breathing in, but I was just like brackets, what we're looking at. Um, Oh, yeah, I forgot about the um, writing in the top corner is covered, isn't it? Like this, anything in this area you guys can't see. Um, yeah, forgot about that. Yeah, I'll try and try and not write stuff up there. It's on my screen, it doesn't have that box there, so it's easy to forget. Um, okay, anyway, so yeah, let's go through these. So we've got two intercostal muscles. Have we got diaphragm? They control the, uh, well, the intercostal muscles control the ribs. Both those control the volume and that changes the pressure. So, oops, can't write down there. It's too, too close to the corner. What are we going to say for this respirometer? We don't really cover with this more in the A2 course. Uh, Penny, yeah, you should say like which intercostal muscles, say like whether it's the internal or the external, you should specify. Um, so that's probably why you're not getting a mark for it. So inspiration, these ones, yes, contract. Then the internal ones, relax. So the intercostal muscles, like many muscles, these work as a pair. So it's called an antagonistic pair. They both work in opposite directions. So kind of like the bicep and the tricep, they are antagonistic. They work in opposite directions to move your arm. The external and intercostal muscles move the ribs up and down uh, in different directions because muscles, muscles can only pull, they can't push. So you normally have to have two to achieve movement in both directions. 
Um, sometimes you have more than two, like in the tongue, there are many, many muscles all working in different directions to create complex movements, but most like, or oh, a lot of joints have like two, two major directions. Um, <clears throat> so opposite to antagonistic muscles, what do you mean? Like they, they are muscles that work in opposing directions. That's what it means. Um, so diaphragm, um, this moves down, so it contracts. Contracts and flattens, so it moves down. Ribs move up and out. Pulled by the intercostal muscles. Both of these together, so the ribs moving up and out, pulled by the external intercostal muscles and the diaphragm moving down, increase the volume. So this increases. If you increase the volume, you decrease the pressure. This is now Boyle's law, another one. But you don't, again, you don't need to know the law. Um, so if you increase pressure, you decrease the volume because they're inverse, inversely related. So now we've got lower pressure in the lungs. If you have a lower pressure, air always tries to move from high pressure to low pressure. So now the atmosphere, the atmospheric air outside is greater than the pressure in here. So then now we've got high pressure. Obviously the atmospheric pressure hasn't changed but it's all relative. Now this is a higher pressure than here. Uh, lower pressure. So the air moves in down its pressure gradient, basically. <clears throat> um, Kyla, I would say, don't say the thoracic cavity moves up, say that the ribs or the rib cage moves up but you can say the volume of the thoracic cavity is increased. So in fact, that's actually probably better than saying the volume of the lungs increases. So both of these work together to increase the volume of the thoracic cavity. Oops, cavity like that. You could add that in definitely. Um, Yes, cardiac muscles aren't antagonistic. Yeah, so yeah, when I was talking about that, I was mostly talking about skeletal muscles, which generally are antagonistic. Cardiac muscle or smooth muscles tend not to be antagonistic. Smooth muscles tend to contract in like, there's like sheets of muscle or there's rings of muscle. So these are like the ones that like control the like bladder or like various sphincters in the body or um, they control vasoconstriction and vasodilation. So they, yeah, they don't work in antagonistic ways necessarily. Um, why the pressure is lower? Because the volume has increased. So if you increase the volume, you decrease the pressure. Because you haven't, if you think about it, like, if you increase the volume of something without allowing any more particles in, now those particles are more spaced out because there's more room for them to move. So more spaced out particles is lower pressure. So now when you like open your mouth and you've got low pressure, the particles outside are more crammed together. They're gonna to want to get into all this space. So they go from high volume, high pressure to low pressure and we, we breathe in. So yeah. It's kind of a weird idea. There's actually no such thing as suction technically. Um, all there is is like pressure differences. So we create low pressure and it's more like the air is pushed into our lungs than we suck it in. It's the same in a hoover. It's kind of a weird thought. Like it's not, the hoover's not sucking in the air and the dirt. It's just creating low pressure. And then the high pressure outside pushes the air in. It's a bit of a weird idea. It's kind of, yeah, it's the same effect, but it's actually not quite what you think is happening. Um, 
Yeah, exactly, Ria. Easy way to remember the rule of this. This is one of those ones I would just, if you haven't got it memorized already, I would write this out on a flashcard, one for inhalation, one for exhalation, just the key bullet points. And then like keep like do the look, cover, whatever it's called. Look, look, cover, write, check, repeat. I can't remember how many steps are in that, but you know what I mean? Like try writing it out. If you got it wrong, try it again, look at it, try it again. And, and after a few times, you'll have got it like memorized. Do it over a few days as well to make sure it's really uh, enforced. Okay, so that was inhalation for breathing in. Let's look at exhalation or expiration is the synonym. Brackets, breathing out. So in this case, what's going on in each of these stages? Nice. So yeah, this one, this time, this relaxes. This one contracts. Um, diaphragm relaxes. Uh, moves up. So the diaphragm is like, it's like this dome shape when it's rested and it's flat when it's contracted. Um, the reason it moves back to a dome shape is because in this space, there's like the stomach and all the other intestines. So the sort of, they like push the diaphragm back up. And when it, only when it contracts, does it like push the stomach and stuff out of the way. Um, so this is why, you know, when, if you're like, if you've like gorged yourself and like eaten so much, maybe like on Christmas day or something, eaten so much food that you like, you're like struggling to like even breathe. That's, that's, that's why like you're actually like physically can't contract your diaphragm properly because there's so much food in your stomach. Um, anyway, not directly relevant. So ribs move down and in. Volume decreases now. This decrease in volume will increase the pressure. Now we've got high pressure in here. This forces air out of the lungs because pressure in the lungs now. Is now greater than atmosphere. In this, that uh, so looks like a weird, like a more like a weird seven. It's supposed to be like a greater than symbol. Whereas in this one, pressure in atmosphere is greater than in the lungs. Um. <clears throat> Is hiccuping your diaphragm inside out? Not not inside out, but um, yeah, it's like spasms of the diaphragm. Um, I don't know if the, I feel like hiccups are still not fully understood scientifically. Like we don't really know why they happen as far as I'm aware. Um, and some, yeah, there's been some people who've ended up having hiccups for like decades, like rare cases. Um, and they didn't have, the doctors couldn't get them to stop hiccuping. They didn't know how to do it, which would be the the worst. So annoying as a like affliction. Um so ventilation isn't passive. Ventilation is an active process, but diffusion, gas exchange, like the gas exchange part is passive, like the oxygen moving. Uh, into the blood and the CO2 moving out, that's passive, but ventilation is active. This is using muscles, so it is an active process, yeah. 
Um, there's a TED talk on hiccups. Oh, nice, Magda. I will check that out. Um, do they like explain the theories behind it? Like what actually makes you makes you um, hiccup? Um, cool. So how are we feeling with that? I've run out of water. I'm so thirsty. All this talking makes me super thirsty, but we've only got 50 minutes left, so I won't get a refill. Um, nice. Let's do some exam questions then. Oh, Haley, you were talking about expiration only. Yes, actually, that is true. Maybe I should point that out. So in general, um, vent uh, like exhalation, you don't need to use energy to breathe out. So uh, ventilation is active because breathing in requires energy, but actually to breathe out, to exhale, you can just sort of relax and the, the lungs will move back to their, like, like they'll contract naturally. That's if you're like breathing slowly, you can do something called forced exhalation, which is when you need to breathe out quickly. So if you're just like sitting resting, you're probably not gonna be using any energy to breathe out. But if you're like trying to like hyperventilate or trying to like do exercise, you need to blow the air out faster. So that's called forced exhalation. And um, that does require the intercostal muscles to contract. So yeah, that's a good point. Thanks for raising that. Cause I think, yeah, I didn't mention that before. Okay. Playing the tuba. Yes, <laughs> exactly. That would require some forced exhalation or like any woodwind or brass instrument. Exactly. Or like singing. Um, so with that in mind, Question just exactly on that. Um, so breathing as hard as you can, forced expiration. Describe and explain the mechanism that causes forced expiration. So what can we say here for four marks? Spirometer, yeah, we'll maybe get to the spirometer, although actually, Hmm, don't know if we'll actually have that much time. So internal ICM, intercostal muscles, contract, because this time it's forced expiration. Um, diaphragm relaxes. Um, this, and then we talk about volume and pressure. This decreases um, the volume, which increases pressure. So air is forced out. So something like that, one, two, three, four marks. Um, yeah, nice, lots of good answers coming in there from you guys. Exactly, you could, there's no reason, uh, no reason not to mention the, uh, the uh, can't talk, trying to talk too quickly. There's no reason not to mention the external ones as well, yeah. So plus external, I, C, M, relax. Definitely, you can have that. You did, it wasn't required by the mark scheme, but no harm in putting that there as well. You also have down from relaxes and moves up. That would be good too. The difference with normal expiration is you wouldn't have this. You don't need to contract the internal intercostal muscles for normal 
exhalation. Just the ribs will naturally like move back to their normal position and the like the air will be pushed out anyway. Um, nice. There's also, there's some elastic tissue in the alveoli, which also help with like elastic recoil, help to like expel the air. So that's another feature. Okay, so for this question, we're looking at people and the lungs. Um, so we've got group A, healthy, group B, people recovering from an asthma attack. So these people are asked to take part in this experiment. They breathe in as deeply as they could and then breathe out by forced expiration. Then the scientists measured the volume of air breathed out by the different people. So healthy people, people recovering from asthma attack. So unsurprisingly, people with asthma or have recovering from this asthma attack have a lower uh, volume of air that can be like breathed out. So the question is asking for the force expiration volume, FEV, uh, of a person in one second, how much has it decreased in the people with asthma? So percentage difference between group A and group B at one second. At one sec. It's basically the question. So, um, Susie, yeah, that would actually be better. I always say lungs when I'm not thinking about it, but yeah, um, better to say increase the thorax volume. Nice. Um, cool. So percentage difference. The way to do a percentage difference is um, we do the, the difference. So like original minus um, new value or whatever you want to call it. That um, divided by original times by 100. So in this case, um, yeah, yeah, color, that's the correct equation. The only thing I would say is it's quite hard because it's very small. This one actually is coming in at more like 0 0.9, but you're right for this one. This one's definitely 4.2. This one is a bit hard to see in this picture. The resolution is not very good. So it's a bit blurry, but it's actually, it's not quite on the line, but 0 0.8 actually comes through about halfway up. So um, yeah, just be careful for that. So 4.2, minus 0.9, that's our difference, divided by um, 4.2 times 100. Um, and then, yeah, are we getting, I think, yeah, if you did 0 0.9, then it's like 79% or 786 Pooja. Yeah, exactly, you can round up. Um, they, there was a range, but I think you had to at least say 0 0.85. You weren't allowed 0 0.8 for this value. But I mean, I would allow it for this question because I think the resolution of this image isn't that good. So it's kind of hard to see. Um, yeah. So hopefully, that makes sense. You can't put 78 though. You can put 79 or you can put 78.6, but you can't put 78 because that's rounded incorrectly. So you can either do to no decimal places, just a two sig figs, 79%, or you can do three sig figs, AKA one decimal place in this, uh, in this context. And the 78.6, but you can't put 78, that would be incorrect. Um, is A or B the original? So it says, like, how much 
has group B decreased from group A? So it's told us which is the original in this case. So you've always got to look for the, the text for clues as to which one is which. Do you internal intercostal muscles only contract during forced exhalation? Yeah, exactly. That's, yeah, that is the case. Um, cool. So I think, I don't want to get into this now. And also this, this is, um, this is only like AQA specific as well. So I, uh, sorry, no, it's, it's not, not AQA and actually a lot of people do AQA. So that's a good point, a good time to end, I think, for this lesson. So hopefully that was useful and hopefully you enjoyed it and got something out of it. Just before you go, um, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about our, like the Snap Revise website. That's kind of like why we run these classes to give you guys a taster of uh, what we offer on our website. So let me close this and show you our website, which looks pretty damn snazzy these days, I would say. Um, so this is like the homepage. You can sign up um, and do, do a trial session. So you can try before you buy. Um, Journey has very good reviews from the students who are using it. So let's look at one of the packages. So this is obviously a biology class today. Let's look at the AQA biology. You sign up to specific um, like packages. So this is the biology AQA package, but if you're doing edXL, you would do the biology edXL one, et cetera. They're all um, specified for specific exam examples. Um, so let's go through. It's all put into the, the units that you'll be learning and all split into like little quizzes. So very nice. And it, it ticks off once you've like revised the topic. So it's really nice for keeping track of your progress and kind of like, feel like gamification, which is big now um, in terms of, um, it kind of like makes you want to go and do more revision because it's very satisfying to have it ticked off. Like, does anybody here use Duolingo and how they kind of make it a bit of a, bit of a sort of game, bit of a challenge and it, I find it helpful. Like it's it's good. It keeps you keeps you working. So let's look at ventilation because that's what we covered today. So when you're starting a topic, you have this option to do a quiz, and what this will do is basically um, diagnose how well you know the topic already. And this is really useful. This is one of the best features I think of the website because there's so much to learn. You can't be wasting time revising a topic that you already know quite well. Um, so do the quiz. If it says you already know it well, then you can kind of like sort of maybe skip that topic or only do a few questions on it. You don't have to like, you obviously know it already. So yeah, very, very useful. So um, yeah, we would click a few of these. Um, let's say we get one wrong. Um, so what is the external muscles during inhalation? So moving the ribs down and in, that's gonna be wrong. This will flag later. I'm just going to skip through the rest of these. Skip, skip, skip. Okay. Oh, what? I'm in the next topic. Um, so I think maybe it doesn't do it when you skip. So if I hadn't skipped and gone through it properly, basically the questions you get wrong, that will link to the relevant video and the section in the video that, that you need to revise. So you don't even have to watch the whole thing. So say we got something wrong to do with inspiration, it will tell us watch this part of the video because you got a question wrong on this. So um, yeah, just to revise that bit. You watch the videos uh, and then do another quiz and then do some exam questions and um, stuff on the topic. So by the time you've done all that, you should have a very good understanding of that topic and then it will tick it off green and you can move on to the next one. So yeah, really nice, really useful. Wish I had it when I was doing my A-levels because this is a lot better than just having a CGP book, flicking through it, half-heartedly making some notes and 
not really getting much benefit. You've got to be doing active revision, not just like reading notes. It doesn't really do anything. So that's the videos. These are some exam questions on it. So split into like easy, medium, and hard. The solutions underneath, really nice, friendly uh, layout, super useful. Um, condensed revision guides for each topic as well. So um, yeah, kind of like cheat sheets, everything you need to know, nothing you don't need to know. So really handy. There's a lot of waffle in textbooks. So we cut all that out and just give you the, the stuff you need. Um, there are some different packages. So the basic package, you have the access to the videos and the quizzes. You have everything basically what I've just gone through. Um, if you go to one of the more advanced packages, you also have the option to join the web classes, which are kind of like what we're doing today, what we did now, but with much smaller group sizes. So I'd say they're much more interactive because normally like today we had about 160 people in the class. I can't answer all the questions when there's 160 people, it's just too much. So when we're in a normal class, if you'd subscribe to the website, it's around like between eight and 12 people in a, in a lesson. Um, so we can answer all the questions. And if there's something you're not sure on, we can go through. Uh, no, nothing against CGP. I think they're, they're, they're good. They are good revision books, but a lot of people waste time revising just like staring at their CGP book and not actually actively revising. So the books are, the books are fine. It's more like how they're used. Um, so this is, yeah, we run web classes. Um, so for example, Topoka, one of the other biology tutors is doing one on carbohydrates tonight. Um, and then next week, like I'm doing some on variation mutation. We've got these drop-in sessions, which are whatever you guys wanna learn. You can just email in your requests and we'll do it in the, the week. Uh, and then some more like topics coming up over the next few next few weeks. Oh no, these are the past recordings. So all the all the old sessions are recorded and kept on um, online. And I think I don't know what the schedule of the next class is coming up. Oh, okay. The format slightly changed since I last looked at this. So now it's like in a calendar view, which actually is is nicer, a nicer way of showing it. Um, I guess that's kind of it. The final, I get, oh, the final thing would be on these videos. If you're on the ultimate package, you can, when you're watching these videos and you still don't understand something, you can ask questions and one of the tutors will answer your question. Um, so this is not a very good question. I would say, what is phosphorus? Um, but yeah, Ollie has answered the question anyway. Um, so again, useful. If you've watched something, you're still not sure how it works, um, get some help from one of the cheaters directly. So yeah, that is kind of it. Super useful website. Do check it out. Consider um, subscribing. What else do I have to say? Just open this again. Um, Oops. So, okay. Uh, yeah, please like subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you wanna just join on with these YouTube sessions, these are always gonna be free. So you can just, you can set a reminder um, to, to come along. We've got a biology one again in a month. We've got other subjects uh, now. The website is, paid and yeah it's 50 pounds a subject per month which seems like relatively expensive but actually if you compare it to the price of tutoring like tutoring in london is upwards from 50 pounds an hour so you can easily pay like 70 80 pounds an hour for tutoring in london so compared to that um it's it's a bargain and you get a lot more than just one hour for that 50 pounds if you do multiple subjects, the price goes down as well. Or if you if you buy it for longer packages, price goes down. Um, so this is your code. 
This is for everybody. Um, use this. Lungs 10. It expires at midnight tonight. So if you want to check out the website, you get a free week anyway. And then use this code and you'll get a free uh, 10 pounds off your first month. So worth using. Uh, the winner from Instagram is chosen tonight, I believe. Um, so I think they just, they'll post the winner and they'll presumably tag you in it as well, or let you know. You'll definitely know if you win, basically. Um, Ariana, good. Glad to hear it. Um, yeah, I hope to see you all on the website in the future. Relaxing01, why have you just <laughs> messaged moist lining now? Is this a delayed, delayed answer to one of the questions? Um, oh, they're gonna message the winner. Um, cool, yeah, that's basically it for me. Hopefully, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully that was useful. And I would like to see you guys on our, on our website in the in the future okay um yeah bye guys bye bye you can still enter it's not too late you can enter uh and for the rest of like at least for a couple more hours so yeah do you still enter this is on the gcse ones nice there's actually a different tutor is going to be running those courses but um a, a new tutor but um yeah she'll be she'll be very good Nice, no worries. Have a good one. Oh, that's just frozen. Bye bye.